Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum and welcome all viewers. Today I wanted to do a reaction commentary video to a video posted by YouTuber Max V World Media. The name of the video is My Payday Slash Title Loan Story. We almost got murked. So the reason I wanted to comment on this video is because yesterday the khutbah was about rizq. It was about sustenance and about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who provides provisions for His creatures. Allah tells us in the Quran, And there is no creature on earth but that upon Allah is its provision, rizq. And He knows its place of dwelling and place of storage. All is in a clear register. So some of the main points of the khutbah was just to remind us that it is Allah who provides. Many people forget this and we get caught up in the different institutions and the corporations and the governments and we think that they are the ones who provide for us. They are the ones who can promise us jobs and food and this and that. Whereas in reality, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has determined the provisions. He's the one who really provides for us, the one that sends down the rain, that makes the sun shine. So we should put our trust in Him. And at the same time, part of putting our trust in Him is going out and seeking those provisions. And one of the main points that relates to this video is that we have to do it within the framework of what is permissible. One devastating reality of life is the use of interest and usury. Allah informed us that this is a major sin. We've also been warned about the dangers of being in debt. Yet nowadays, interest and usury is so widespread and there are so many people in debt that it has really devastated people's lives. It has really hurt the society. So this morning when I came across this video and he was talking about how he used to work for one of these companies that was giving out these high interest-based loans and about how his life was even at stake because the people whose lives were so negatively affected by these loans they were given, it led them to want to go and, and hurt these people. So I'm about to start playing the video, but I want to emphasize the importance of learning from other people's experiences. I think uh, one of the most important things about this life is learning from other people, whether they be older than you, whether they be your peers, or even if they're younger than you. So for example, the wisdom that he shares with us in a 14 minute video is wisdom that took him you know, maybe hundreds of hours to acquire. Yet we get to benefit from it and learn from it in a matter of minutes. But even more importantly, when we are learning from other people's experiences, we have to make sure that we are always viewing everything through the lens of the Quran and Sunnah. Because we know the Quran and Sunnah, that is the ultimate source of wisdom and knowledge for the human being. So that's what we want to do today. I'm going to play this story and then jump in here and there with some commentary based on what Allah and His Messenger uh, have taught us. I got a story for you guys. I got a payday loan slash title loan story for you. Now, for those that don't know what payday loans and title loans is, let me just explain it. Um, a, a payday loan is you can go somewhere as long as you can prove that you have a job, you can actually get loan some money into your payday. I do not recommend it. I do not recommend it. I'm going to tell you why, because it almost got me murked. But I'll tell you in a minute. I know you like Max. What do you mean it almost got you murked? Murked. Killed. You know what I'm saying? The getaway. Killed. Murked. Killed. You know? Out of this lifetime. But I, I'll get into that in a second. So that's what a payday loan is. A title loan kind of works the same, but it's even worse. It's even worse. If you own the title, if you own your car and you have the title to your car, you can get loaned a certain amount of money depending on what your car is worth. If your car is worth, let's say, $10,000, they'll give you probably up to $8,000 because, you know, they got to make money too. So they'll give you about $8,000, up to $8,000. They'll loan it to you and you have about a year to pay it off, it, it, a year to 13 to 15 months to pay it off, something like that. I don't recommend it. That's even worse than a payday loan. Because let's say if you get a, a loan for like $2,000, you're like, damn, I got $2,000. All right, cool. No, no. When that first bill come and you ain't got that $2,000 no more, now you are obligated to pay these people every single month up to three to 400% times what they gave you. It's illegal. I think it's illegal. I think I always thought it was illegal, but out here they got loopholes. Like they can't charge a certain amount, but they charge up to the maximum amount of um, interest rate out here. 
it is the worst thing you can possibly do because you can never get out of it. I've seen people to lose their lose everything. And I'm about to tell you, they lost their cars. They lost everything. Right. So think about what he's saying. He's saying that he, he feels like this this has to be illegal because it, it's so unjust. But we know, Islamically speaking, this is haram. This is from the major sins. So if somebody is following Islam, then the minute that they understand like, oh, they're, they're dealing with interest here, then you know you can't deal with it and you won't touch it, inshallah. However, what about people who they don't really know any better? It sounds good to them. Okay, I get this loan, I get this money, I'll try to pay it back. And they don't really know what they're getting themselves into, which is why he is saying, don't do it. He worked for one of these companies. He saw the effects that it had. He's not even talking about this from an Islamic perspective. He's saying this is one of the worst things that you can do. It's like destroy people's lives. But, you know, for some people, it's like instead of just, you know, submitting to what Allah and his messenger said, they have to learn the hard way or they, they want to be convinced by actually seeing it play out uh, in reality in front of them. So let's continue the story and, and get a taste for what actually happens with these types of loans. It is the worst thing you can possibly do because you can never get out of it. I've seen people to lose their lose everything. And I'm about to tell you, they lost their cars. They lost everything. Right. So I'm always the type of person where I need extra money. I need extra money. So. Back then I had two jobs. <clears throat> I had two jobs. Um, this is before Uber. I had two jobs and I also, I cleaned offices at night. So I had three jobs. And then I said, I need something on the weekend. So I went by this payday loan place. I was like, are you guys hiring? She said, yeah, we're hiring. Cause I saw that they hiring in the window. But I, it was just a, you know, open up conversation. I said, I see, no, I said, I see you guys hiring. She was like, well, can you interview right now? And I wasn't prepared for it. I said, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll interview right now. She was like, just fill out the application because we need people right now. We're willing to train. If you're willing to learn, we'll teach you. So I'm like, all right, cool, man. I need another job. I can, man, I know y'all like, damn, Max, what you doing with all these jobs? You know, a brother just... A brother just need work. A brother just, let me see where I'm apart. So he mentioned working all these different jobs and it reminds me of this hadith that was also mentioned in the khutbah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you were to rely upon Allah with the reliance he is due, you would be given provision like the birds. They go out hungry in the morning and come back with full bellies in the evening. So the scholars, they explain this hadith by saying that it clearly states that the birds go out in the morning at the beginning of the day looking for food. This refers to making effort and taking measure to seek provision. Even though the hadith affirms the importance of putting one's trust in Allah, having tawakkul, it explains the right way to do so. Thus, it indicates that taking appropriate measures and means is not contrary to putting one's trust in Allah. Rather, it is part of perfecting that trust in Him. So yes, Allah is the provider and we put our trust in Him, but we also go out seeking His provisions. A brother just need work. So... I interview with them. I fill out the application. I interview with them. The interview went well, you know, of course. The interview went well, of course, and um, I got the job on the spot. I got the job on the spot and she was just telling me all the stuff that it entails. You're going to have to sign up new members uh, when new members come in. You got to sign up new members. You got to approve the loan. You got to enter their information into the computer, to the database, to the company database. And then that will tell them how much they're eligible to loan out. It was a payday loan slash um, title loan place. So I learned both. And um, I caught I caught on real easy to like how they be jerking people. And also I just caught on to how to do it. And um, it's really sad. So. All types of people used to come in there and get um, title loans. All types of people. You think just black, you know how they say, oh, black people ain't got no money. No, no, no. All types of people used to come in there. Um, Asian. Um, I even see nurses come in there. Doctors. I swear to God. Um, ner uh, do um, people in medical school, military. That was big for the military. A lot of military people go in there. A lot of military people going there, military people, young people, old people. 
it was it was kind of sad. And um, sometimes people, they they run into a situation where they can't wait for the check. They need money right then and there. They don't ran into a situation. They don't have a lot saved up in the bank. Emergency come up. They need money. So. So just think about that for a second. This is a major sin. This should be left. Allah said this is a major sin. His messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, warned against dealing with interest like this, warned against uh, being in debt. And look at all these people. Like maybe there's some sort of an emergency, somebody they don't really know any better. They need the money. And then, bam, they fall into this major sin. And then you'll see what happens about how people's lives just fall apart. I just want to emphasize that because if something's a major sin, we have to know like this is really a horrible thing. And I don't think... A lot of us really understand how bad usury is, how bad dealing with riba is and what it what it leads to. I remember I got the hang of it, it was one Saturday. I'll never forget it. It was one Saturday. Um, now, the worst type of scenarios are where you got to tell people, you got to call people. And then sometime we, we used to have outwork. You know, um, we had to go out in the field work, meaning we go to people's jobs. Like, yeah, like if they don't be picking up and all this stuff, we'll roll up to your job and see if your car is out there and all of that. So we and then they'll have people follow you to see where the car is so that we can get the, the tow truck to actually go get the car. It was crazy. It's a really crazy business, really crazy business. When your out work is sometime you had to go stalk them at their job to see if they're still working there or stalk them at the house or go out and find out where the car is, right? Because sometimes we didn't want to have to pay investigators. You can go out and do it yourself in which you get extra money for doing it. Um, and then you take a picture of the car, eat, um, send it back to the office or whatever. And then we got to work out a time where we go get the car if they if they um, defaulted on their loan or whatever. You see how they know people aren't going to be able to pay? It's like really predatory. They got it all figured out. Okay, when people can't pay, we're going to come. We're going to get their car. We know where they work. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's really messed up. And for what? What work are they doing? All, the, all that they are doing is they're sitting on some money. They're lending it out. And then they just sit there and then they just collect. And then all of a sudden they own this from you. You got to pay them way more back than they lent you in the first place. It's really evil. So it was a lot. It was a lot to the business. But I remember uh, when clients come in and... They've already defaulted and we got to tell them that, you know, no, when the clients come in, the title loan type clients come in and they already got their car snatched. Those are the worst type of scenarios. And we always like to have more than one person in the office when that happens, because we'll also get messages like, OK, we got a certain amount of clients that got their car snatched and we already know we about to have some static this weekend. So I'll never forget. It was one Saturday. This one guy come in, he's like, as soon as he came in, he said, you better give me back to F my car. You better give me back my car. I didn't know. I was like, okay. I'm like, sir, let me see if I can help you out. What's your name? He said, never mind my name. Where the F is my car? Where are my keys at? Where are my keys? And I remember he had a, um, he had a, a Mercedes. He had a Mercedes and they came in on um, the tow truck. We got the tow truck. They tow his car like three or four o'clock in the morning. When they come get you, they come get you about three or four o'clock in the morning. So he was like, where the hell is my car at? He was like, I only missed one payment. No, he said he only missed two payments. And he said, you guys are ripping me off because the interest rate is so much. I said, well, sir, this is what you signed up for. He said, I never mind that. He said, if you don't give me my car, I'm murking everybody in here. I'm murking every now. They didn't know what I know what murk meant. That means kilt. I know what that means. I'm like, I said, y'all ain't paying me for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, y'all not paying me for this. So then I went in the back. I was like, listen, he making threats. She was like, I'm about to call the police. What's messing with um, when she tried to call the line was busy. It was something crazy while we couldn't get the cops. So he was like, I'm telling you right now. Give me where, where is my car? And I told him, I said, your car is at the tow, the tow place. He said, What's the address? And I gave him the address. So I want to think, think about this for a minute. There's a lot of things to, to analyze about this situation. So first, yes, the man, he said like he the interest is too high. He can't pay it. Right. As we said, this is haram to begin with. So they, they got this high interest rate. He can't pay it. 
So he missed two payments and they went and they snuck, they snuck and took his car at like, like three, four, five o'clock in the morning. So Max is like, yeah, but you, you signed up for it. And this is the messed up part because it's like, you should be protected from signing up for something that is so detrimental to your life. This is part of the, the problem of just having people that don't have morals. Like they, this whole system, this whole operation that they got going on is so immoral. Yet somehow it's legal somehow. Again, it's not, it's not legal according to uh, the Sharia, according to Islam. But, you know, here somehow this is legal and, and this is what's, what happens as a result. And another thing is that, like he said, you're not paying me enough to have to deal with this. You know, people coming in, threatening people's lives because they've been pushed to the edge. You took their car. You're charging them all this interest like they're, they're snapping. They're ready to lose it. So these people who are running the operation, doing all these horrible things to people, well, they're, they're in the back rooms. They're, you know, somewhere else out of the uh, out of harm's way. Meanwhile, they, they hire these employees and they have to sit there on the front line dealing with people like this. Give me where, where is my car? And I told him, I said, your car is at the tow, the tow place. He said, what's the address? And I gave him the address. And then he left. He left. And then the cops came and um, they was like, well, he's not here. So do y'all want to file a report? It was like, nah, he left. It, it is what it is. And um, I remember I was talking to my manager. I was like, listen, man, y'all don't pay me for this. Y'all don't pay me enough for this. I mean, how, how many times have y'all got threatened? She said all the time. She said all the time. They got threatened all the time. Can you imagine if you're getting threatened all the time? You have this operation where you're obviously taking advantage of people. You got it all set up where, you know, you know where their cars are. You know what time in the morning to take it from them, where they're working. And you're, you're basically your business, the way to really make money is for people to actually fall into these situations where they can't pay or or where they just keep the interest keeps building up and they keep owing money and then you start taking their uh possessions and stuff. I mean, that's this is very very uh evil situation like subhanallah. And they didn't want me to bring my firearm in there. So I'm like, how am I supposed to protect myself? She's, "Well, you can leave your firearm in the car." I said, "Leave my firearm in the car." I said, we get threats like that, man. That was a legitimate threat. I said, you can tell the look in his eyes. I said, y'all don't pay me enough for this. So I was like, listen, if this happened again, I'm just going to have to either quit or put my two weeks in. But it was good money. You know, it was a hustle. You know, I had my regular job during the week. Um, then I used to clean offices at night. And I did th this on the weekend. I was making good money. Right. Think about that, a job where you have to bring your gun because you're <laughs> you're treating people in a way that they're going to come and, and potentially want to kill you. I mean, it's crazy. The police left. The police left. And we went back to business as usual. Another lady came in. She um, was getting ready to default on her loan. And we gave her an extension or whatever. If you call in and say that, you know, usually they can work something out, but he never called. He just started defaulting on his loan. So. We thought everything was cool. We was getting ready to close up. We was getting ready to close up. And um, you know how during the fall, you know how it gets dark early. So we was getting ready to close up. It was already night outside. The next thing you know, this dude just whooped that he swooped down out of nowhere. He right when we was getting ready, right when I was getting ready to lock the door, he just come barging in the door. He said, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. He said, You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm a good guy, I'm a family guy. But y'all need to give me y'all need to sign over so I can get my car back. They took his car to the auction. They had already took his car to the auction. They took his all his stuff out the car. His car wasn't even at the tow place no more. It was at the auction. So when because that's what they do, they um they, they get money off your car quick as hell. Like as soon as they snatch your car, they don't think the average person not going to pay to get their car back because they tack on all these fees. Right. So. In order for him to get his car back, he had to pay all he had to pay his loan off. Right. Pay the rest of his loan off and the towing fees and the fees th that they um, when they took his place to the uh, auction downtown. Um, so. He said they took my MF and car to the auction and whatever. He said, yo, I'm just out of my luck. I lost my job, but the car was paid for and I made a mistake in duty. You mean tell me. I don't have my car. I said, um, he said, what do I got to do to get my car back? I said, yo, you're going to have to pay your loan off, which he couldn't afford. He had to pay his loan off. He had to pay um, the tow company. He had to pay the tow company again for towing his car to the auction. 
And I said, if you can do all that by this date, because they didn't, they, I said, they're not going to auction your car off yet. They're not going to auction your car off yet, but you have until this date. You see that he said he's a good guy. He's a family man. He had his car paid off. He made a mistake. And now he's threatening people's lives because, because of the situation that, you know, he found himself in. Yes, of course, part of it is his own responsibility. But just like Max V was saying, I mean, this should be illegal. You have until this date to get your car back and you straight. Well, I ain't got the freaking money. I'm telling you right now, y'all about to get murked. He said, if I don't get my car back, y'all give y'all getting ready to get murked in here. And I'm sitting there like, yo, they don't pay me enough for this. Year. I said, if I can get the hell out of, out of this situation, I'm never coming back here again. I'm not even giving it two weeks. He was like, yo, because he came back in a heavy coat. I don't know what he had on under that coat. So um, manager was in the back. She was listening to the whole thing. She called the police and then the police came. Next thing you know, the police came. Oh, as a matter of fact, that when the police came, he got locked up. He did have something on him. He did. And I said right then and there, um, I'm never doing this again. And I didn't even give him a two weeks. I just quit that night. Crazy story, man. Um, with payday loans, but just in closing, payday loans is not worth it. Payday loans and title loans is not worth it because it's not meant for you to pay it off. They know like a certain percent, they already know a certain percentage of their customers are going to default. And then they're going to be able to make money off the sale of your car and they can legally come after you for the money still. Um, it's just, a, it's just a bad situation, but a lot of our service men and women go there. Um, ex-military, current military, current military, all types of people, man, go there. Yeah, so I just wanted to share this story because it's, it's fascinating on many different levels. Number one, you got some behind the scenes of somebody who actually worked in that environment. He understood the game, how it went, how they took advantage of people. They had it all set up. He also has experience with people who were on the other side, who were victims of this. And you got to see the desperation and how they were ready to actually, you know, they were threatening people's lives. He said he said this man got arrested and he actually had something on him. Like like he was really about to, to do something to people. So there's no doubt Allah, he is the all knowing. He is the most wise. If he has forbidden riba, usury, interest and made it from the major sins, of course, there is a uh, good reason for that and we should submit to that understand that accept that and not have to learn the hard way and also i appreciate max v for sharing that story so that we can also learn from other people's wisdom i mean how fortunate are we to just be able to sit back and learn from that person who got his car taken and we got to learn from him who worked for those people and saw that no this is not something that you should do this is knowledge and wisdom that we got to benefit from just by sitting here and listening to the story so may Allah protect us from falling into debt. May Allah protect us from being involved in riba. And may he grant us good halal provision. Jazakumullahu khairan. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.